Are you looking for a small native tree with awesome blooms that support native bees and honeybees, is also a host plant and looks great all year long? Then the eastern redbud, Cirsus canadensis, may be the tree you're looking for. Redbuds rock as yard trees, and here are nine reasons why. Starting off with the reason redbuds are named redbuds, their early bloom of pink to purple flowers. There is no question that the prolific blooms of the redbud are a showstopper. Since the blooms occur well ahead of the tree leafing out, there is nothing to block the spectacular show. A cool trait of the redbud is that it may also have clusters of blooms along the trunk and branches. A trait known as cauliflory, not to be confused with cauliflower. That literally translates to stem flower in Latin. If you want a burst of early color, redbuds bloom from March to May, depending on location. It is hard to beat the Eastern redbud. We are going to stay with the flowers for number two. Those beautiful flowers don't just look good. They are an early season nectar and pollen source for native bees such as bumblebees and especially many of the mining bees in the genus Andrina, which are emerging and mating when the red buds bloom, honeybees and the early season butterflies. Not only are the flowers great for pollinators, but they are also edible and can be eaten raw or used in cooked dishes. If you love learning about awesome native early blooming trees for your yard, buzz like a bee and pollinate that like button. The third reason redbuds make awesome yard trees is their compact growth form. Redbuds can get from 20 to 30 feet tall with a 25 to 35 foot spread, but they are often much smaller. Coupled with a slowish growth rate, this makes the redbud suitable for smaller spaces and yards. Redbuds can grow as a single trunk tree, but more commonly they have a very pleasing multi-stemmed or multi-trunked growth form. No matter how many trunks it has, the crown will form an attractive spreading dome, which will really show off the blooms every spring. Coming in at number four is adaptability. Redbuds have a large native range and are adapted to a variety of growing conditions. They can grow in full sun to part shade with better flower production in sunnier locations. Form is also better if the tree receives a decent amount of light during the day. In very shaded locations, redbuds tend to grow tall with fewer branches. Redbud is not picky about soils if they are not too dry or constantly wet. While this video is all about the redbud, there are many great native trees that are smaller in size and do great in a yard. If you would like me to cover one in a future video, just let me know down in the comments. Redbud is an attractive tree even when not in bloom, which is number five on this list. The large, deep green, heart-shaped leaves look great and dance and shimmer nicely when the breeze blows. Green, bean-like seed pods add to the show during the summer and are edible when young and can be used like sugar snap peas, which they sort of resemble. The reason they look like pea pods is because redbuds are members of the pea family, the Fabaceae. This family is well known for the many edible beans and peas it produces and for fixing atmospheric nitrogen into compounds that are usable by plants. Interestingly, the redbud lacks the ability to fix nitrogen as do around 10% of the plants in the pea family. Okay, I totally squirreled off on botany nerdery. Back to the redbud's good looks. Redbud has cool looking red brown bark with whitish lenticels on young stems and the twigs. The bark will furrow and fissure as the tree matures, adding interest. The twigs have a super cool zigzagging growth pattern that can be somewhat seen when the leaves are on, but is much more evident in the fall and winter. Which leads right into number six. Redbud has great fall and winter interest. The green leaves will turn shades of yellow in the fall, and after they drop, the brown mature seed pods will persist throughout the winter, and along with the growth form of the tree, give it a great look, even without blooms or leaves. As a bonus, the seeds are fed upon by many species of songbirds, including cardinals and gross beaks, and even some small mammals. I would like to take a second to announce the launch of the Backyard Ecology Community. The Backyard Ecology Community is a supportive membership community for people in the eastern United States who love nature and want to transform their yards and communities into ecosystems that support pollinators and wildlife. Just like all of you who tune into these videos, we created this membership community as a safe place to ask questions, celebrate accomplishments, help each other to attract more pollinators and wildlife, and to just plain geek out about nature. This is far more than just a fancy message board. There are interactive virtual events led by me and Shannon, special occasions, and even coaching discounts for community members. If you would like to learn more about the Backyard Ecology community, there is a link in the description.
The leaves of the redbud are related to number seven. Redbuds help support native bees beyond being a source of food by aiding in some species' nesting efforts. Leafcutter bees cut circular sections of the leaves to make nests inside cavities in hollow wood. While leafcutter bees use a variety of plants for this, they seem to prefer redbuds' smooth, soft, and supple leaves in many areas. It is easy to tell if the leafcutter bees have been busy on a redbud due to the many nearly perfect little circles that have been clipped out of the leaves. They almost look like they were punched out with a machine. The leaves are also part of number eight. Redbud is an excellent host plant, and over 24 species of butterfly and moth caterpillars are known to feed upon it, including those of the Henry's elfin butterfly and three species of moth that are specialist feeders of the redbud leaves. The promiscuous angle moth, the redbud leaf folder, whose zebra-striped caterpillars make cool little leaf tacos, and a small brownish caterpillar with no common name, Xenopus chambersana. A quick note about leaf color. There are red-leaved cultivars of redbud. Please do not plant them if you love caterpillars. As female butterflies and moths avoid red foliage for egg laying, as the high anthocyanin content of red leaves is not palatable to caterpillars. Every time I do a tree video, I get asked about resources to help identify trees and shrubs. I just wanted to mention a book I recently got, Trees of Eastern North America, which is in the Princeton Field Guide series. It covers everything east of the Great Plains, has a quick guide to twigs and leaves, and covers all of the native trees, invasive species, and a ton of ornamentals you may encounter while out and about. Each species description includes a quick ID, detailed description of the leaves, bark, flowers, and fruit, a range map, conditions where it can be found growing, and a super helpful discussion of similar species. The illustrations are clear and show what they need to. This is a great field guide for those of you who want a book that will cover just about anything you will run into in Eastern North America. At the time I filmed this, it was selling for under $20, which is a heck of a deal for a book that covers so many species. I will put a link to it in the description. Number nine on this list is availability. Eastern redbud is one of the most commonly available native trees in the horticulture trade. They are sold just about everywhere. Now there are a ton of cultivars of Eastern redbud, many of which have been selected for leaf color, bigger blooms, or different color blooms. If you want the biggest positive impact for pollinators, stick with the wild type. They are still super beautiful, and there is no question about how pollinators will benefit from them. Also be sure you are getting an eastern redbud, Cersus canadensis, and not a species native to the western US or even Asia. As always, help your local native plant nursery and get your redbud from them if possible. There are other small, native, spring-blooming trees. And a great contrast to the pink-purple flowers of the redbud are the large white blooms of the flowering dogwood, which you can learn all about in this video. And be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.